Hello, Dr. Michaelides. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Well, it's, it's, I'm sure, I hope I can impart some of my knowledge <laughs> in this little talk we're going to have. I'll just give you a thumbnail of, my, uh, of myself. Um, I was a GP in Port Elizabeth for 36 years and I had three partners. One was an old Jewish gentleman. I say old because he was 51 and I was 27 when I joined him. Mm -hmm. Then, and my second partner was a, uh, a, a um, Afrikaner, a gay Afrikaners, a gay Afrikaans doctor. Mm -hmm. And we became known as the practice that had the biggest gay practice in Port Elizabeth. Right. And I think also, and we were also known as very funny. Here I am of Greek descent, an Afrikaner and a Jew, mm -hmm. and we were called the English practice. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which was no, quite no, ironic, true. all yes. of our opposition were Afrikaans. Yes. How did I get interested in sex? Because I asked the old man, who was a superb GP, mm -hmm. my, my, my uh, older partner when I joined him, old Aaron, in fact, I called him Aaron for, I called him Dr. Gordon for one year before I called him Aaron. Right. You know, those were the days, you know, you didn't call anybody by their first yes. name. And, and I said to him, look, Aaron, people are coming to me now because I'm young and I'm married with their sex problems, especially the women. Yes. What do you do? Yes. He says he didn't know. Right. And, you know, I thought about it and then Masters and Johnson had just started bringing out their first book on the physiology of sex. Yes. At uh, sex, just the physiology. Then I also went to the clinics and I said to them at the clinics, look, if there's anybody here who has sexual problems, please refer them to me at my, I, I did a clinic once a week, uh, a health clinic. Yes. You know, which I didn't charge for, it was out of my practice. And eventually, I built up a relationship or a practice that people knew me, that I was called Dr. Mike. Yes. I even had a radio show, can you believe it? Fantastic. My father was so embarrassed. <laughs> he said, couldn't you have done cancer? <laughs> <laughs> like that would be better. <laughs> <laughs> My father was, he yes. was, in those old words, he was an absolute old school gentleman. Right. Always wore a suit never saw a love I adored my father mm -hmm. and but he was saying he would never come to one of my talks yes uh, my wife would, would have her head done and they'd come over there and they didn't know that it was me that, that, that I was a husband talking and she'd laugh like hell mm -hmm. uh, about you know what I'd said on the air and, and never said but then you know when I gave a talk and some of the men would come up to her with a nod and a wink, you know, yes. and say it must be nice being married to the sex expert. My yes. wife had a beautiful answer. Her answer was, the coach is not necessarily the best player. <laughs> you know, I'm going to talk about sex. An American writer once said, sex is not the best thing in the world, it's not the worst thing in the world, but there's nothing else quite like it. And I thought that's a magnificent description of sex. The thing that interested me was vaginismus. Mm -hmm. And this often were couples, you know, in my day you didn't sleep before you got married. You yes. Know, I'm talking 60s, 70s, 60s and 70s. And on their honeymoon, there was no, he couldn't get in. There was no penetration. And what would happen, the first thing they would do, they would see a gynecologist and have a, a Fenton's Op. It's called Fenton, if you -E N-T-O-N, a Fenton's Op, where he would operate on the woman and make her a bit bigger and what have you. Now, I saw the failures of the Fenton Op. Shame. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, and I really felt sorry for the couple. I had a lovely couple that will live with me for the rest of my life. Well educated, both had degrees, had a terrible honeymoon, still couldn't have intercourse. Shame. Okay, so they came and saw me. So what I did, I said to the husband, stand next to me, I'm going to examine your wife. Mm -hmm. And as I approached her, she would start crawling up the bed. I mean, Shame. So Shame. terrified, I said, no, no, this is what we're going to do. I'm not going to examine you internally. I said, what we're going to do is this, give me your finger. Mm. 
and then I'll put some KY jelly on your finger. Now put your finger mm. in your vagina mm. and I want you to clap and mm. pinch mm. and relax and pinch and relax. Mm. Okay. Right. Now she did that. Then I said to the husband, let's put some KY jelly on your finger. You wear a glove if you want to or what the hell. Anyway, so I said, gently mm. let her insert your finger into her vagina. Yes. And the same thing happens. Relax, knape. Relax, yes. knape. Yes. And I said, this is what you've got to do for the next week. No, don't even try and have intercourse. Right. Practice this that you can slide your finger in and she can knape and happy. You see, this is where the GP has the edge on a psychology. Absolutely. Because you can't do this. Absolutely not. You can't do no. this and things like that. Of and course. Also, I mean, as I said to you under the G spot, you know, yeah, was the, the clitoris. Yes. You know, and there because a lot of people will tell you that they don't have orgasms while they're having intercourse. But if he uses his finger, yes. he has an he has an orgasm. Yes. But you know why? Because they're not doing they're not the penis is angled in such a way it's missing the clitoris. Yes. And that's that's what's happening where a lot of patients came to, and I'm going off the subject now. No, not at all. Because a lot of patients came to me and said, you know, Doc, while I'm using my fingers there, mm. you know, I, she, I can bring it to orgasm. But when we try to have intercourse, I said, no, put pillows under her hips yes. and angle yourself that your penis is rubbing right. against the base of her clitoris. Yes. That's why she's not having... I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, I know I've digressed. That's All fine. Right. Now, the next time they came, a week later, we did the same, but this time two fingers. She mm -hmm. put two fingers in her vagina, but very important, she's got to clape and relax. Yes. And she's got to control that thing, the yes. claping. And then with the husband, also two fingers in, but he, she puts his two fingers in. He doesn't put them in. Yes. I mean, he doesn't do it himself. Yes. She assists him to put the two fingers in, knape, relax. Yes. Do this at home. Don't even try to have intercourse. Okay. Right. That's two weeks. Some people give them a, a metal rod. I thought, oh, my goodness, what are they? I know there was some somebody, some other mm -hmm. the people used to give them a metal rod to put in their vagina. I thought, my goodness, how awful. <laughs> but yes. that's just a personal thing of mine. Then the third week they came back mm -hmm. and I said, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to use three fingers. Yes. And with due respect to your husband, I don't think his penis is as broad as three fingers. Yes. And they put in the three fingers gently yes. and they clapped and relaxed. And you know what? They came back and I said, now you've just used this for a week, still no intercourse, let's use the fingers. Then, then when they came back, after three fingers, they said they were happy. I said, now do the intercourse, but may I suggest mm -hmm. that you sit above your husband in the, in the female superior position, mm -hmm. you take his penis, you control it yes. completely. He just lies there, he doesn't thrust, mm -hmm. and you gently, in, and you and you clape and relax mm -hmm. and clape and relax, and you gently insert his penis into your vagina. Yes. And you and found that, that was successful. I got it really good, and they were so. I have never had such a thankful couple in my oh, life. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, you know, there's just sometimes yeah. you, you really Shame. help people. Yeah, of I course. Mean, these people, I mean, they had the Fentons up in there. Oh, mm. gosh! But to me, you see, even though they were so educated. Mm -hmm. They still had this problem. Shame. You know, you expect to people who are badly educated or ill, mm -hmm. you know, got no education, would, would have, you know, slam, bam, thank you, man, type mm -hmm. of guys. Anyway, that's my story.